When it comes to designing an awesome desk setup, it really only takes a couple of products working together in a magical way to make the whole thing come together. And that's gonna be true of what we show you in today's episode of Desk Envy for sure. Before we get there though, we have to give shout outs to our winners from last week's giveaway. If this is you, congratulations. You won some awesome Razer accessories and you should be getting a message in your inbox soon about how to claim your prize. But for this week, we are giving away an awesome, awesome prize. So if you like free stuff, make sure to stick around to the end of the video so you find out what we're giving away. But for now, let's go set up a desk. So last week we talked about a single cable gaming setup using an external GPU and plugging all of our gaming peripherals into that. Well, this week we're doing something kind of similar, same theme, but a drastically different outcome. We're gonna be talking about Thunderbolt 3 and DisplayPort over USB-C and how these two technologies can really transform a simple little desk setup into a whoa, that's crazy clean kind of setup. And as always, that's what we're aiming for here at Desk Envy. Before we can really get into it though, we have to address some of the terminology because it can be really, really confusing, especially if you just wanna go out there and buy a laptop monitor or you know, even USB hub. So stay with me, it's not gonna be that bad. We'll get through it together. So USB-C is the port type. It's the physical thing that's on the end of a cable. And Thunderbolt 3 is the standard that uses USB-C that Intel created that kind of allows for things like power delivery or support of external graphics. What that means for this setup, and hopefully a setup that you could try out, is through one cable, you're gonna be able to power your laptop and push high resolution video out to a monitor. And that's exactly what we're doing with our XPS 13 and Dell 27 ultra thin USB-C monitor. Now let's stop and talk about these two products for a second because these are some of my favorite in their respective categories. The XPS 13 has been our favorite laptop here at Digital Trends for many years actually, but this year's especially has really perfected the formula. Not only does it have this great new frost color option on the outside, the interior white color has also been brightened and it looks a little bit whiter, which is really nice looking, really clean on a desk. Of course, it has those tiny bezels that the XPS 13 has always pioneered. If you look closely though at this year's model, you'll notice it's just a fraction of a hair, of a centimeter, of a millimeter, I don't know, it's really small. It's slightly bigger than last year's model on that top bezel. And that's because Dell has managed to squeeze in a webcam that actually fits up there. So it's no longer down below or off to the side, creating a really awkward webcam position called the nose cam. Instead, it's right up top where it belongs. So gotta give it to Dell for actually fixing this major problem that everyone has had with the XPS 13. I won't get into all the reasons why I love this laptop a bunch, whether it's the performance or the build quality, but I do wanna mention the port selection because that's what actually makes it work in this scenario. It has two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the left side and a USB-C port on the right side. So like I said, you gotta be careful. You don't wanna plug in the wrong thing because it won't do what you're trying to do. But once you find that Thunderbolt 3 port, you'll be well on your way to living that single cable lifestyle. The other half of the equation is the monitor, which is the Dell 27 USB-C ultra thin monitor. It's a mouthful, but all those titles are important, especially the USB-C, again, for this connection. So this is a 27 inch 1440p monitor. It's not quite up to 4K, but I really think that the sharpness of this makes it a great solution for the average person because 4K monitors are still really expensive and this is a bit more affordable. The image quality is fantastic and this is a great solution for someone like a photographer who needs those really accurate colors and also a really wide color gamut. Now one thing this monitor does lack is adjustability. So we threw it up there on top of this awesome Grove made walnut monitor stand. The cut of wood and this color, the tone of the wood just looks awesome. And there's something about this monitor sitting on top of it. It's a really nice combination between the silver aluminum and the darker finish of this wood. The stand also makes for a great place to hide away your accessories like your keyboard and mouse. There's plenty of space under there for that. If you need to clear your desk for some reason, maybe you're working on something else or maybe you're just eating lunch. Speaking of peripherals, I'm really excited about the two that we're featuring today. Not only because they work great in the setup in terms of color scheme, they're also just some of my favorite keyboard and mouse products I've ever used. The first is not at all unique, but it is a classic. And there's a reason why it shows up on just about everyone's desk, the Logitech MX Master 2S, S2. You know, make up your mind tech industry with the S, just put it in the same spot every time. This is the 2S. It's an old faithful, but we have to hand it to Logitech for having made a mouse that's just been 
the best mouse you can buy for so long now. What makes it so good? I mean, it starts with the look, man. It just looks so great, especially for a mouse that does have some extra buttons, some customization, and even some ergonomic features. I mean, for a mouse that does all those things, Logitech has managed to keep it looking very clean. I especially like this light gray version, but if you go over to their website, you can see they have a ton of different color options. You're bound to find something that will work for your vibe. The second is the feel, which does ergonomics without going too crazy, without doing something that's gonna take you a long time to get used to. The thumb rest gives you just enough support to get you through a full day without feeling any of the pain and ache that can come with using a mouse that has no ergonomic features whatsoever. Speaking of a full day, the MX Master really does get awesome battery life with claims up to 70 days per single charge. That's 70 days, not 70 hours, 70 days. And that's really important for a wireless mouse. You just don't wanna to have to constantly be worrying about plugging it in and charging it. It also has just enough customization and extra buttons to be useful without giving you way too much to think about. On the thumb rest, a press down will activate a gesture. In Windows 10 by default, it's the app switcher, which I find actually really convenient. You also get a horizontal scroll wheel and back and forward buttons that are a little bit hard to reach. Now, each of these can be switched to other functions in the software, but it keeps things pretty simple and it doesn't give you so many options that you fall into an overwhelming hole of customization that you can never climb out of and you ultimately doing nothing with. I've been there before. The changes here are far more subtle, just little things here and there that can actually, you know, do something to your workflow, which is the whole point of an awesome mouse like this. Now the keyboard here has a bit more of an interesting story behind it. It's called the K1 and it's from a company called Keychron or Keytron, I don't know. But it's a really cool company that did a Kickstarter, raised a bunch of money to make what, you know, beforehand we probably wouldn't think is possible, a low profile mechanical keyboard that doesn't suck. I'm a big fan. The basic idea here is to bring the joys of typing on a mechanical keyboard away from just PC gaming people and bring it over to a little bit more of a mainstream audience, somebody who might want to pair it with something like an iMac rather than just a PC gaming rig. The travel is just three millimeters and by the standards of a typical PC gaming keyboard, you know, that's not probably not gonna cut it. But if you're coming from one of those crappy keyboards you bought on Amazon or maybe the iMac keyboard, it's gonna make a huge difference just in that tactile feel and the feedback that you get when typing on it. And the great thing is it's not crazy expensive either like some of these keyboards out there. I mean, the non-RGB version is just $74 and you can jump up to the full 104 key version with RGB lighting for just 20 bucks more. Links are in the description. Next, let's talk about our audio solution for this setup, which is an awesome pair of noise canceling wireless headphones made by Microsoft, the Surface Headphones. These are just an absolute blast to use, which might sound a little weird considering we're just talking about a pair of headphones, but just as a gadget, it has all these cool little features that make it really fun just to try out and use. The best part is the controls, which give you a dial on each of your ears. On the left, you get control over noise canceling, which gives you a few different stages of that. And then on the right, gives you volume control. It feels really intuitive to use these two dials and it's not hard to imagine, you know, some of the context for which it would be really useful. For example, in an office setting where you might wanna alternate between a really focused mood where you're trying to get your work done and that way you have your noise canceling all the way up, or maybe you wanna be a little more aware of what's going on around you and open to people coming and talking to you, which you can turn it down for. The ear cups are really comfortable and the sound quality is good, but more than anything, I just really like the look of the Surface headphones. I mean, headphones, unlike other pieces of tech, are things you have to actually put on your body. And for me, I'm gonna, you know, weigh the design and look of something a little bit more in the case of headphones. I think the Surface headphones balance design and function really well. I do wish the battery life lasted a little bit longer, but we have a solution for that too. We've got these headphones hanging on the Fermata headphone stand from 12 South. It's just a simple, nice looking, well-built little headphone stand that works great in this setup. One slightly annoying thing about this headphone stand is that it came with just a short little micro USB cable because headphones still charge over micro USB for some reason that I will never understand. But our Surface headphones use USB-C. So using the little system that they created, routing the cable along the base of it, underneath it, and just up the stand provides power to the Surface headphones. And it's great because you'll never forget to charge the headphones, which is my problem with wireless headphones. So whenever you have it on the stand, you plug it in and you never have to worry about it. 
And now it's time for that part of the show we like to call finishing touches. We don't actually have much on this week's episode because we're so focused on that simple, clean look. But I did have one thing I wanted to mention, which is this little faux grass thing that you see in the back of a lot of our videos. And the reason why is because it looks great on a desk and can kind of bring some green into all of that, you know, wood and silver and white and black. It's a nice little addition, but it also has a couple of other features like it actually can be used as a pen holder. You, know, you can throw a couple of pens in there that work like that, or you can use it as a phone holder too. So great little thing to throw on your desk and the link is in the description to check it out. And that's it. That wraps up this week's episode of Desk Envy. Hope you enjoyed it and hope you're a little inspired to go out there and clean up your desk a little bit, make it sparkle to give you the inspiration to do the awesome things that you do. Keep it going. One last thing, our giveaway. Here's the announcement. We're giving away the Logitech MX Master 2S. That's right, this mouse that we love so much, we're giving it to you. We're giving it to one lucky person out there. If you wanna enter, all you have to do is leave a comment, letting us know what you would actually do with this awesome little mouse. Let us know what you do for work or for play or for whatever you wanna use this mouse for. Leave us a comment and we'll choose a random winner and we will announce it in next week's episode. So hope you enjoyed this episode. Leave us a like if you did and make sure to subscribe to get the next episode of Desk Envy. And thanks for watching.